Welcome to Real Flicks Reviews, or like a book club for people like reading. Next two months are going to be Robin Williams tribute, so James picked the movie Toys, made in 1992. We talk about episode six of Firefly, and we bring you movie news at the end of the program. This week we have John the Charney, James Stevens, and the old guy is here. We're going to let the old guy tell the description this oh week. yeah yeah okay so when a military general inherits a toy making company and begins making war toys his employees band together to stop him before he ruins the name of zevo toys forever that so doesn't that, really describe that, the movie i mean that's it that's that, it that, see you guys later we're done that's about it. Well, this is this is this movie's more like a surrealism threw up and added robin williams to the mix you know i was actually quite interested in the fact that you know, Tim Burton didn't direct this one. Uh, Just off the that's surreal true. colors and the palettes and everything. Yeah. Did you know that they actually filmed this in Washington, the green grass? Yeah, and that yeah. Area? we they were talking that. about that, trying to figure out where where yeah. did they get that I green grass. I was kind of thinking it must have been like New Zealand or something, but no, they only went up to Washington. Yeah. I, Two states away. Ooh, and I, state. I wish I knew where it was because I'd like to go see they it. Actually, but I, uh, I want to see those fields and fields of green grass all at the same height. It was just... Yeah, one of those... They it said was that like, it was in a, how did they do that? Near a college. Huh. I, I don't remember exactly. I looked it up and I read a little bit about it. But yeah, it said it was near Washington College. I don't think it was a state college, but one of them. And this definitely... this I think this is towards the, the end of when movies had uh, starting credits. Because yeah. 92, 93, that's when they started really phasing them out. I mean, this movie and Ninja Turtle 2, Secret of the Ooze, or whatever it was, the last movie I, I really remember having starting credits. Hmm. Yeah. Anyways, um, so, you know, I one of the things about Robin Williams that I find interesting is that you never have to wind him up. You more have to reel him in. Mm -hmm. And he seemed really reeled in for this film. He wasn't off the wall like he normally is. That was an interesting thing to me, because he only went off a couple times, really. Well, this movie was so off the wall, I don't think he needed to be. I think that was was, was Robin Williams' genius is when he realized when he didn't have to be, because I think if he was even more crazier than this movie, I think it would have been even worse than it is. Well, all, all the characters were pretty zany, and, yeah. and, and so what happens is instead of just being Robin Williams zany, Everybody was kind of crazy I, and had their crazy not, things. Not and, as much as Joan Cusack. I think she was the queen of crazy. Well, yeah. Movie. Yeah, Joan Cusack. You was, know, and I actually knew she was a robot before they even, you know, I haven't seen the film before. This is my random, weird uh, movie I haven't seen pick. You sure picked thing. the right <laughs> one. Holy yeah, crap. I did. I definitely did. Um, <laughs> anyways, um, and, you know, I think they should bring back the plastic hairdo style. You like that? I kind of thought that was a well, little Well, that's your made it easy. Plastic, she could you know? just... Pop it on your head and hit on out. You Very know, June know. Cleaverish. That's right. Yeah, and actually, yeah. Uh, they say the field scenes were filmed in the Pal Palouse, Palouse region of Washington State, just outside of Washington State University. So I was right. It was Washington State University. Anyways, but, um, you know, the, the interesting thing is that uh, Robin Williams is putting on his costumes, and one of the costumes that he put on the orange one that was all orange. Mm-hmm. He said he kind of felt like he was going to be like the eighth Doctor Who. <laughs> or something <laughs> well, like he's that. a he, he he was a big Doctor Who fan. Yeah, yeah, very yeah. big. So I could see that in, yeah. in some of his styles. But um, you know, I other than the feel that this one was a Tim Burton movie and it really wasn't. It was uh, let's go back. It was Barry Levin Levinson. Levinson. Yes, thank you. Anyways, uh, he's one of the writers and he actually is the director of this one. There was that scene where he's putting his uh, sister to bed, mm -hmm. and you have that kind of the, the swan the, thing. Yeah, the swan mm -hmm. thing. But there's that little cutout, and then you see the background mm -hmm. and everything. That to me, and there was a couple other things that made it kind of look like you're actually at a theater. Mm -hmm. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's something that you don't see in films these days anymore, where they kind of design set sets in that type of feature. Yeah, that was an the, interesting thing the use of size, the scale in this movie, I think is what you're talking yeah. about. Because it was always like a, a set within a set. Yeah. Oh, a lot of those scenes yeah. were that way. You like, know? My, yeah. like, do you have any favorites? Because one of my favorites was the the Rubik's Cube room. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The yeah. room yeah. with everything was shrinking yeah. on. I really Coming loved on. that. That was good. Yeah, that one actually, uh, there was some really great co quotes in this movie. Um, but, you know, that was actually one of the ones where it was... Uh, one of the better quotes. Uh, I don't have it right in front of me for some reason. I'll be able to down. Will you look for it? I'll give you mine. Mine was uh, 
every time it was uh, every I always feel like the excuse me I always feel like I'm watching the last temptation of Barbie uh, that's the one where they're doing the Barbie stretching to mm. see if the the doll's head will pop off oh right <laughs> uh, yeah. and and oh no he broke my sister Yes. Uh, Which is well, actually uh, one of my favorite quotes. If we're gonna go there, is I want my string beans to be quarantined. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's right. So that was <laughs> I my mashed potatoes. Hello, Cool J. Yeah, I want a moat <laughs> around my mashed potatoes. But he doesn't a want fortress. his food touching. He wants military food or a tray for everything, right? And yeah, yeah. And I, I love his version of the military. I love the, his version of the military when he can be dropped off anywhere and somehow find his way, even though he doesn't have a map. Yeah. Yeah. And let's not forget, this is uh, Jamie Foxx's very first movie. Trivia, I didn't do quite so. That's true. Yeah. And, oh, by the way, the, 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 the security outfits they were in totally looked like they were from, like, a 90s yeah, rap I video. Actually, <laughs> I actually wrote down, it was like kind of like seeing the TSA in the yeah. beginning stages, the way that they were making them get in there. And that, that, yeah. that yeah. soundtrack, holy crap. This is like the definition of a 90s movie with that soundtrack. Yeah, it really was. All it was missing was hammer pants. Yeah. Anyway, uh, you know though, my favorite scene of all those when the general goes to the to the arcade. Yes. And he starts shooting the UN vehicles on right, purpose. Right. Yeah. UN, you don't need to be there. And yeah. he's kind of discussing, kind of bringing it back to the Vietnam War, which yeah. is one of the ones that he was supposed to have served in. And <clears throat> I think they really actually need to make a UN game where you can destroy the UN. <laughs> I thought that cool. was great. That's actually what I would have been doing. Good my idea. My wife huh? even pointed that out. She goes, this is what you would be doing if that was your game. Oh, totally. <laughs> and that game later on in the, the thing when Robin Williams was kind of discovering what uh, the general was doing. Yeah. I always thought that game looked fun. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Were they just shooting random crap? I mean, come on, make that game. I would actually still buy it. <laughs> it looked so much fun as a kid when I saw this movie. Yeah, there there was some fun things in there, and they had the precursor to drones, the Tommy tanks, and the uh, what was the whirly it? the the whirly bird. Uh, I, wrote, I wrote it down. Well, it's, yeah, um, it, and it was they they brought up hurdy drones. burly helicopter. That's there you go. Hurdy birdy. Basically, hurdy -burdy. drones before drones was yeah. a word. Right. Yeah. I mean, they yeah. were they did kind of. The interesting thing is that it, uh, they one of the trivia things is it says that it, <clears throat> excuse me, can we get some cotton in my throat? Um, is Barry Levinson. Uh, it took 10 years to create this film. It only took 10 months to shoot it. I can, you know what? I totally, I, after seeing this movie, I can see what took so long to make it. It's because it's a very offbeat script. It is. And I can totally see really, really working hard to make a movie that, like this. Yeah, and this one is actually f uh, nominated for the worst film of the year. Really? Was it a Razzie? I don't think it was a Razzie. It was something else. I was trying to find that earlier, and I couldn't find it. Really? <clears throat> wow. Yeah, that was one of the yeah, things I noticed. Bad. Um, you know, and that's actually the biggest point I want to bring up is this film, it drags. It Ugh. really drags. I couldn't believe how bad this film you're actually you're, you're, you're shocked by this? Well, I hadn't seen the film before. Oh. This is something I've never seen. I, I do have a question. I thought the beginning of this movie, when you had the, the funeral scene... I thought Robin Williams looked like a Malcolm McDowell in a Clockwork Orange with that outfit he was wearing. Yeah, my wife kind of pointed that out, too. She mentioned something about that. I saw that, and I'm like, hmm. wow, so that's what happened to that guy. He worked for Zevo Toys. <laughs> but And the thing that really bothered me is the fact that we still do not have virtual headsets that are cheap enough for the masses to get that have the full experience. Oculus Rift, it's on the way. <laughs> Somewhere down the line, but it's still not going to be, you know, affordable for the masses I, was this one of ll cool j's early movies like I yes it, it, it wasn't as from my i could find out it wasn't his first but it was close because you no know, apparently everybody loves lady you know ladies love in this movie oh yeah. the most interesting scene to me and i want to see if rob goes along with it that that shot that he <laughs> fired at the fly that and did you notice that he pulled the trigger you heard the you heard the shot and then about Two seconds later, you see the dent in the door. Mm -hmm. Did you guys notice that too? Mm -hmm. how, how off that was? Oh yeah. oh, yeah. That was the worst thing I've ever seen in any film is that that little scene right there. Followed by one of the funniest. Yeah. Guy oh. shooting himself yeah. in the foot. I still like the I love that. Medic! Yeah, yeah the medic yeah, that, that is pretty, pretty funny, funny. But, you know. I like the elephant, too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> which, which one? All the elephants were pretty funny. Oh. The way they used their trunks for different things. Yeah. Cameras yeah. and guns and... Oh, toys. The, the the toy weapons in this were hilarious. My my favorite one was that one of them was the ball that bounced with those playing oh, the ukulele. Yeah. Oh yeah. That 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 little doll with a girl 
suckling, <laughs> and then they had the the, the six shooter pop out. And they also again. had the copper tone baby that's running around with the dog. Yeah, yes. yeah. Surviving the big war, right? I, I think yeah. they had, I think they had more fun with the props in this movie than anything else. They must have, because I mean that's really where I think the film had its appeal. <laughs> Was was the props? Yeah, it was the props and the little toys and the knickknacks and and for me this film, what I, the first note I wrote down was Willy Wonka, but for toys. That that's really and what with, this film pretty much is summed up. But I would but say not as good as Willy. I would Wonka. say this is closer to the Johnny. Nowhere near I, as I good as Willy is, Wonka. I would say this is. I would say this is closer to the Johnny Depp version than everybody's favorite. Uh, yeah. I, I wouldn't say, even could, give it that much. That's giving it way too much credit. I yeah, don't think I, so. I hate uh, that version. I'd oh, rather this, this I'd, movie was far worse. I would rather have Gene Wilder any day than the, the well, one with Johnny Depp. So, I, I really dislike the, the new one. The Johnny Depp one was totally different. It was dark and it was a whole different. That, that's really what it was. No, yeah, no, you, it was you're right, supposed the, to be a lot more darker. Yeah. It was supposed to be, and it wasn't supposed to be the same as Gene Wilder. No, it wasn't no. trying to compete. And that's not taking anything away from the oh, no. Gene no. Wilder version. So does it say really good to get back in track? That was the lamest Lincoln-esque speech ever. By Robin Williams talking to the toys, and yeah, you know, you've never seen your springs exposed. That's right, like, really. We're gonna go to war, oh we're gonna fight God. these war toys with, yeah. And by the way, talk about war toys. Why Fucking does a toy animals. drone need an exterior target reticle? That's actually a curious thing, too, as well. I, I didn't understand that, but I think it was just because for, it was a cool effect, yeah. I think it was it. for a cool effect, in that it that, was just uh. For looks. Really. There's nothing that makes any sense in this movie, so what's the difference? Oh, there we go. Uh, it was uh, nominated for Worst Picture at the Hastings Bad Cinema Society's 15th Stinkers Bad Movie Awards in 92. Hastings? Is, is that the English version? I have I no think idea. That, that's probably is. <clears throat> I think it is, yeah. Oh, uh, my, my, my first note. It's bad. My first note was the start of this movie foreshadows the strangeness of the rest of the movie. Yeah. It's, th this movie is a long, long drawn out, strange trip. I love the music video though. I thought that was ingenious. Yeah, the music video was was it was and it wasn't. I I think it was very uh, Talking Heads type of. I would say B fifty twos. Well, that's what we thought. It, it, it was was very that's kind of pretty B fifty two. Because the beat, the, yeah. the, the sound of it was very B fifty twos. Right, right. It was. Uh, you're right. But there was a lot of different things that that. Did it say who did the score? I don't know. I oh, I think it was a oh. Let me see. I know his name, and I can't. While you're right looking now. it up, I would say this movie's so bad that even Robin Williams at the end was glad it was over because he was clapping. Yeah. You know the, the opening scene that you're talking about, where they're kind of dancing and and the nutcracker-ish. Yeah, the nutcracker-ish thing where they're running through the Manhattan uh, skyline thing that they built. Didn't make me want to watch the film. Didn't really make me want to continue, to be honest. I, yeah, really. I remember watching this book came out and wondering, what the hell am I watching? Where's Robin Williams? Where's all the fun? You and know, then... but I'm actually glad that I picked this without reading up on it. <laughs> because it was actually quite a surprise. And, it, you know, I, it's a Robin Williams I've never seen. And it, You were surprised, it, really? It really highlight that even Robin Williams, who <clears throat> is one of the best actors, and no, I don't think any of us are going to disagree on that point, had poor taste at some points. I would have loved to know, and I don't remember if I've watched anything about why he picked this movie. Because I'm assuming at that point of his career, he could have said yes and no to it. I'm so surprised if, Bill Murray didn't beat him out on it. Uh, this se doesn't seem like a Bar <laughs> Bill Murray movie. Can you imagine? Well, Bill Murray picked some horrible films. Of course oh, he oh, has. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, of course yeah, he has. Oh, any totally. of the comedians <laughs> out there who's picked bad films, I think Bill Murray's at the top Anything right he's done there it on with purpose, uh, but... Rodney Dangerfield. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, yeah. Some of the best scenes in this movie, though, are Robin Williams goofing around like that sound jacket. Yeah, or he had a lot of fun with that, and that, there the was also the jacket. one that was the, the light one. Was the good. smoking jacket was yeah, good. That one, that but the good. um, the one with the lights that was actually uh, supposedly designed by a by a really up there Italian designer. Oh, mm. the was it the the, the sound one with the no the lights one, the ones with all lights, the blinking lights and everything. Yeah, I think that was the sound jacket. I don't think that made sound, did it? It doesn't oh, matter. It doesn't really matter. Yeah, it's just. A... It was some idiot designing a, a coat that Robin Williams said, hey, "I'll put on film. Why not?" Yeah, what the heck? <laughs> yeah. Jeez. 
But he looks so young in this film. Oh, he looks crazy. Oh, he does. Surprisingly. Yeah. And John's For, right earlier, you know, he kind of looks like he's still mid-30s, early 40s. He didn't really age all that much, except he kept getting grayer, which... which oh, I there was, was that amazing. one scene where they're sitting there and he's talking to the I mean, look how young he looks in this Yeah. Just... Uh, he's sitting there and he's talking to the girl. Sorry, you and guys can, can't see it. And you can see how much hair he has. Oh, yeah. Hair. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he was one he's of the one hairy, 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 hairy you've got, dude. You've got to find, if you guys ever have a chance, go on YouTube and look out him meeting Coco the gorilla. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she was hitting on him. Mm -hmm. I bet she was. It's like, you had a great one time of my with people. Her. Yeah. Mm. Anyways, but you know, the, this film, uh, I, I really can't go anywhere but a one. <sighs> I really can't. My opinion? Yeah, go. Yeah, I, 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 unfortunately, sitting there watching the movie, I, I was thinking, okay, what would I give this? And I go, if we were half points, it would be a point five. <laughs> so since we haven't done the point system yet, we're going to. We're discussing it, it. Yeah, it'll be a one. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it's got to be the worst movie, I think, that Robert Williams has ever, ever, I, ever did. I would actually agree with you. I, I really that. think so. I, I, I actually have to look through his back catalog to say it is, but definitely up there. Unfortunately, I got to agree. This this movie is a one out of five. I was going to give it a two because it made me laugh, and I realized it doesn't make up for <laughs> no. it doesn't make up for the hour and forty five minutes I waited for it to be funny. So <laughs> yeah. I know this is you know it's eccentric. So, it's a very niche genre. If there's somebody out there that likes it, go ahead, write us hate mail. Tell us why you like it, please. Give us a good reason why you like it. That's really what I'm Didn't even for. our phone a friend wanted to say that's an hour and a half, we'll never get back? Yeah, he said it's an yeah. hour and 45 minutes, he'll never get back. He'll never get back? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And this is literally what I wrote describing oh. the whole movie. This, this movie is 1984 meets surrealism made in the 90s. Fits the entire movie. I tell you what, guys out there, audience, and, and my co-host, is that, you know, it was just a thought that went through my head. I'll go with a film that I haven't seen. You know, there's only about 30 that. movies you could have picked. I, 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 <laughs> I think the one. <laughs> well, on the positive side, it's not a trauma movie, but it's pretty close. <laughs> yeah, it's very close. Uh, but, you know, that was a poor pick on my, on my thing. You yes. Know, but I will make up for it when we get to comedy. I will. You I, better. I have a choice. Uh, you, you, I have you a better. in mind that I've already seen that I know is a good one. Good. You, you, you better. So <laughs> we're going to kind of switch gears here to talk about Firefly Episode 6. Yes. Mrs. Reynolds. The Mrs. Reynolds episode. Mrs. Reynolds episode. And right. we have already kind of touched on this one before. And, you know, I just want to point out that this one has some of my favorite quotes. Favorite quotes. Someone tries to kill you, you try to kill them right back. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's, That's good, good sound advice, good actually. Yeah. Best advice of everything Firefly ever gave. <laughs> I, I do. Uh, one of the reasons I like this episode, though, is it, I, I still think it, it begins to kind of hash out his character more, though, because you get to see a little more of his caring side. Well, how, and, and you get to see the, the fact that he doesn't want to be married. He how, yeah, well, be, how plastered did he have to be when he talked to. Um, uh, what's the other guy's name? Jane. 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 Yeah. Was I that loaded? He says, I don't know. Well, I, I passed, passed out. out. <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah. you know, you had to be awfully plastered not to remember <clears throat> something like uh, that. They, so. they did explain, you know, as you drink a cup of her cup that she drank out of the blah, 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 and you're, you're hit. Yeah, yeah, right. And I love but the, I like the point when Jane shows up and he's got that really big gun. Yeah. <laughs> and he's yeah, like, Jane. All right, what the heck is going on here? And it's Jane trying to give him his gun yeah. for the wife. That's right. I'll trade you. System. I'll trade you. This is my favorite I, gun. See, I, I, we got a custom trigger. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the, the, the other one I like is like, that's why I never kiss him on the mouth. Oh, and yeah, they all stop right. and that's go. Right. They all pause and go, hmm. What? <laughs> yeah. I, Oh, I, Adam. Yeah, Adam Baldwin, yeah. You, you really nailed this. Yeah, one. that was, good. I, I that was see, a good one for him. I want to see those two together in another TV show because <laughs> yeah. they they play off better than most people. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, I like the way they turned the Firefly into a uh, into a fighter there, being able to shoot that gun off inside a suit, right? <laughs> yeah. How right? about that for being smart? Yeah. Least. Which is, but you know, which is you know, kind of foreshadowing what they did in the movie, which we will do at some point. Yes, we will. <laughs> we'll do it. We're, we're I'm more wagging my finger at James for pitting such a <laughs> shitty movie. Oh my God! And and with that remark, we're gonna remind you that we do have a Facebook page. So direct all your hate mail to the the little guy over there. Well, I gotta point out that both score? of you guys have seen yes. that film before. Uh, yes. Yes. You guys went to theater and saw this. Yes. Film. Yes. 
I didn't. Which that was 20 years ago. <laughs> so, you know, we've had a long time to make up for paying for it. Hey, look. All right. Paul all right. and I had to take the kids to go see something, and that seemed about as honest a movie didn't to go Batman see. Did Batman come out around that time? Or was I it 90, 91? Or? No, this was 92. Oh, I'm yeah, saying okay. Batman. And I saw that in theaters, too. <laughs> Anyways, so um, we're gonna we're gonna switch off to movie news and James is yes. gonna. Anyway, um, I gotta point out that Christian Bale is news. jumping off the Steve Jobs, I'm it. the okay. Steve Jobs movie. He did. He's bailing out. Bale Does is Christian... bailing. Yep. Christian Which Bale. I have. To, I, that's the, the I say, think it's a good move by him. I, I, I do too because I, do I, too. I think it makes a lousy Jobs. Yeah. I, I do got to say though uh, two things. Noah Wiley. No. Oh. Is the only good jobs. Mm. If, if you got to watch it, watch Pir- uh, Pirates of Silicon Valley. Absolutely. And two, that's the one thing I, I've got to hand it to people like Christian Bale who love what he does enough to go, that's not a good fit. And I've always admired any actor walking away from yeah. a guaranteed yeah. paycheck. What yeah, the, and considering no, well, he would do this movie. I mean, he would be good for that. And considering that Christian Bale didn't walk away from American Psycho, mm-hmm. which actually, it's a very. It's I've, not a movie for everybody, American Psycho, but I've, it I've, is a good film for his acting ability. I have to admit, I haven't seen it, but from what everybody, everybody I know said, they didn't like the movie, but his, his acting ability in the movie was perfect. Yeah. That he, he really fit the, the character or yes. something like that. And uh, my other bit of news is not really technically movie news, is that uh, Tom Hanks is actually stepping away from the cinema and going to books. Really? Yes, he's going to be compiling a, a quote unquote a collection of stories loosely connected connected to photographs of typewriters from Hank's personal collection. Isn't that kind of weird? You know? Well, at this stage in his life, he can be as weird as he damn well pleases. You know, I'll, yeah. be, I'll, you know. be, I'll be completely honest. If you if he does it the right the right way, I think that would be a great movie. Yeah, you know, that well, could, it's not a movie; it's a book. Well, no, no, but it's, I think yeah. compilement but, of but, stories. But you could if you, if you do the stories right, you know every. But I think it could be a, turn out to be a great movie if he does it right. Do it a certain way. I think you could make a, a, a pretty good okay, film out of it. Okay, a film based on it. His book, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, um, but yeah, I just kind of think it's an interesting thing. And, you know, I got to say, Tom Hanks in his career hasn't made too many poor choices. No. I, mean, I think his career, if you actually look at it, he's actually done some really good He's made some really good choices in his career. I really Still one like of my his... favorite movies is Big by him. Mm-hmm. I really like his latest one, when he was playing Walt Disney. Yeah. I, I really like that movie. I mean, even back to Bosom Buddies. I mean, he's he's made a, a, a very, either been in the right place at the right time, or very smart choices. From, yeah, I from think Captain it, Phillips to I, Forrest I, I Gump. I think it is pretty much uh, just good choices. I think he's, you're right on the part I, I, that he's been there at the right time. I would say a little bit of blind right thing. But, I would say you know. a little bit of blind luck for some of his career. Yeah, yeah. But and I mean, he step out after uh, uh, after um, Captain Phillips and uh, and uh, Saving Private Ryan. Yeah, he, yeah. Ca- he took off after that and did some really amazing things that that World War II vets. I think they should be proud of. Oh, no, totally. So, you know, he's really pointed out them, and the, the greatest generation, I think, has had some of the greatest film see, out of him. I mm-hmm. have to, so is he stepping away from behind the camera, too? Because I actually think I'd love to see... I don't know if he's going to. They just kind of say that he's penning a new uh, books, and, you know, it's going to be taking up some of his time. B- beside, sure. I'd love to see him go the Mel Gibson route, not Crazy Gibson, but if you actually look at <laughs> Passion of the Christ and Apocalypto, I actually think they're amazing. They're the the feel of them, the, the the quality of them. I'd love to see a Tom Hanks be more of a director, a producer, and, and go for kind of his his style. Because I I really love like uh, oh, what was it? It was the that thing you do. Okay. You know I I like that movie. He was involved in it. You know he also did the movie uh, the, uh, the TV show that we reviewed uh, last time. Uh, Oh, the story of hundred for the uh, Easy Company. Mm-hmm. Yes, Band of Brothers. Band of Brothers. Now, right. what are you talking about? Passion of the Christ and Apocalypto, because that was Mel Gibson. I, I said I'd love to see him go the way of Mel Gibson, okay. not okay. Crazy Gibson, but with a director. Okay. All right. See, hey, this is why you need headphones. I just kind of messed that part that you're talking about. That I'm like, okay, am I missing something? Did no. no, yeah, you missed what? it. You yeah, didn't you hear might what be right. Said. Maybe we need to be plugged in. I don't know. And so, I would, anyways, I got uh, more, I got some news. If you don't have any more, no, that's it. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, this is one that the, he actually sent me, and this is actually the dates. The old guy. Oh. I was pointing at you. 
the I audience. Sent him stuff. I said I researched some of the stuff that he said last week, and I, I got him some detail. Yeah, so this uh, has actually made me excited. Uh, Captain America: Civil War. I was right. May sixth, twenty sixteen. Doctor Strange, uh, November fourth. Guardians of the Galaxy two, May fifth, twenty seventeen. Thor Ragnarok, which actually has me interested because I really hope it's better than the last one, July 27th, 2017. The Black Panther, which is a cool character, November 3rd, 2017. The Marvel's Avengers Infinity War Part 1, May 4th, 2018. Captain Marvel, July 6th, 2018. By the way, this amazes me how far out they have. Oh, yeah, they got it all, they've got it all planned. And I found, found it all on... on uh Number of the movie websites, and I got the dates and the times and the order. It just amazes me that, <clears throat> that Disney hopes. Well, that Disney hopes it works out that well because I'm impressed. Matter of fact, talk about that. They actually uh, they showed the the trailer for the new Avengers movie, hmm. and it's Age of Ultron, hmm. huh. which is a, a robot AI yeah, that Tony I've Stark heard makes. Of the Age of Ultron thing, and I don't know. No, it's an adventure. I movie, think though, so I'm kind of burned out on those things. I'm not going to get excited for them anymore. <laughs> That's really how I feel about it. Other than the fact that it's an Avengers movie. Yeah. I don't know. Um, I'm I'm hoping they don't saturate the market. I'm more excited for Star Wars than I am for Avengers 2. But I guess we'll see what happens. Yeah. That's pretty much where we're going to have to go. Is we're just going to have to sit back and see how it goes. And hopefully it goes well and not... Oh, totally. Hopefully that it has been. Then again, you guys, you know, we're, we're, we're not beyond taking money. If you want to bribe us for a, a good review, we'll, we'll be glad to take those donations. Yeah, no, consider it. <laughs> it depends on how good your bribe is. That's right. really what well, it goes down to. At this rate, it won't take much. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe not him. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. i got to keep the lights going. Wait, you have standards? <laughs> I've seen some of the hey. movies you've picked. Yeah, like yeah, this, like the one we just too. watched. <laughs> I'm not sure what type of standard you're setting there, mister. God, <laughs> hey, we got to go bad sometimes. Yeah, it's all right. <laughs> uh, we couldn't blame you because you didn't see it before. Wait, yeah, and I've read anything about it. Last week when Jonathan and I both said, toys, <laughs> it should have been your hint. <laughs> wait, hey, wait. It's out there. I'm not taking it back. <laughs> you know what the worst part is? Wait until we do a bad movie month. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We're, we're going to be screwed there because well, I, I, I have a feeling. There's I so know. much to pick from. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, my gosh. No, I guarantee I know what he's going to pick, unfortunately. Oh, no, I don't think you do because you already said that we weren't going with Wicked and Trauma films. Oh, praise the Lord. <laughs> I don't think I would be saying that if I were you. <laughs> well, true. And so <laughs> because, pl- because Ryan is unfortunately absent. <clears throat> yeah, you Cadaver don't see the guy not him. here, yeah. so, you know, it's... <laughs> Ryan, he, he actually, I, I love that Ryan Preston, <laughs> cadaver hunter. <laughs> <laughs> he actually got back to me and said that he's going to be going with Goodwill Hunting. So that's, awesome. that's the film we're going to be picking. So that's one where Robin Williams is playing a supporting, supporting character instead of being a leading actor. Yeah. And we'll be doing episode seven of Firefly. Anybody know what that episode actually is titled? Episode seven, whatever the hell they have in the box set or on uh, Netflix. Yeah, it'll be... Number seven on Netflix, yeah. whichever one that is. I didn't look it up. Yeah. You, what, you didn't? Well, the last time I looked it up, it was the wrong episode. You can't <laughs> go with what IMDb says. No. No, see, it's all Fox's fault. It is. I really can't blame IMDb, except for the fact that they should have actually done it the way that Josh Whedon wanted him to. Yeah, 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 totally. Anyways. So, ladies and gentlemen, um. <laughs> I gave the movie Toys a very deserving <laughs> one out of five. James gave it a very deserving one out of five. The old guy gave it a deserving one out of five, and if Ryan gives it anything more than a one out of five, it won't matter. <laughs> he he might we're, just get hung up. On, we all, we all, yeah. <laughs> He's going off the island called <laughs> Netflix Reviews. Let's fool him next week. We're going to well, say, well, we gave it a three. I actually know a few three people that said they were going to watch this episode just uh, because they picked toys. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> like at least two. So <laughs> I, I Did a phone a friend even butt in? No, I think he was so mad about we picked this movie he decided not to watch. Yeah, his loss, but Goodwill Hunting. His wait, well wait, his it. loss. Yes. Goodwill <laughs> Hunting is a great film. It's actually the one that Matt made Matt Damon and Benny Affleck film. Had, his, had Ryan not picked it, that was gonna be my pick. I, so I gotta come up with something else. I, I gotta say his his ultimate enemy when it comes to movie guys is is, is in the, the next week's movie. But I, I have another one. ultimate and Wait till you hear mine. I mean, he got he's, his paycheck out of paycheck, so. <laughs> he's a runner-up. I, so, I, I got a good one. So, ladies and gentlemen, as always, we'll see you next week. Goodbye. Bye.